Hello, and welcome to Old Toy, New Joy, the show where I share with you my previously enjoyed toys I purchased from online sources, thrift stores, and collector shows that once belonged to someone else. Wow, it feels great to be back. I have not aired an episode of Old Toy, New Joy in several months, and for that I apologize, but I didn't really have anything to feature. Uh, that is until now. I have mentioned in past episodes that I am a huge fan of Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I even dedicated a past episode of Old Toy New Joy to collectibles that were either referenced or remind me of references from that movie. My family is moving, so I recently packed up my man cave, more or less, uh, filling a large U-Haul bin, but that doesn't mean that I stopped collecting. Oh no. And you'll be glad I didn't, because I recently came across some eBay gems, which have helped me feed my hunger of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood collectibles. There are lots of creative fans out there, and somebody decided to make their own custom 3 and 3 quarter Rick Dalton and Cliff Booth action figures. These were 25 US each, and so I nabbed them. And I have yet to see any other three and three quarter figures. However, there are some rather expensive six inch figures on the market, perhaps even licensed. These are uh, one of a kind. So let's take a closer look. So we'll start with Cliff Booth because he is my favorite character. He's a World War II veteran, possibly highly decorated, and Rick affectionately refers to Cliff as Audie Murphy at one point because. Adi Murphy was a real war hero uh, turned movie star in the 50s and 60s. And here we see Cliff dressed in the outfit he wore to Rick's Saturday afternoon meeting with talent agent Marvin Schwarz at Mussolini Franks. I've seen photos of real life stuntman Hal Lindum wearing the same thing. I like this figure. The hair is a little too coiffed for me and more so resembles Cliff's hair on the set of Green Hornet when he's uh, sporting a wig, but the face sculpt is excellent. And the figure is a little sticky to the touch, especially on the jacket, meaning either that the wrong paint was used for the plastic or not enough time was left to dry between coats. We'll get another look here from the side. Unfortunately, the head fell off. I had to glue him back on. He was kind of falling apart. So these are for display only, obviously. Uh, not for playing with. Not quite as good is the Rick Dalton figure. He's actually dressed from the scene where Cliff drives into an early Sunday morning shoot of Lancer, where he first meets director Sam Wanamaker. Again, the jacket is especially sticky for the reasons um, mentioned before. And uh, my hope is that these will properly cure and dry over time, as long as I leave them out. I mean, it's a little humid right now, but once uh, the hair gets a little drier and cooler, I'm hoping that uh, that will help. So let's talk about this bitchin' yellow Coupe de Ville. This is a beautiful 1 16th scale die cast replica of the 1966 Cadillac Coupe de Ville owned by Rick Dalton and driven by Cliff Booth. This model was actually released several years ago with Reservoir Dogs packaging because the car was first featured in that Tarantino film over 30 years ago. Apparently, actor Michael Madsen owned the car in real life and uh, they packaged it as a 65 Caddy but by all accounts, the model year is 1966, perhaps um, it was released in late 65. Some critics have also said that a hot young Hollywood actor such as Rick Dalton would not be driving a Cadillac. Uh, I disagree. Rick's character did drive around in a 59 Caddy before that until his last DUI, so he obviously liked them, which makes sense. The name Cadillac used to infer the best. And for a young actor coming from Missouri and trying to prove his worth and establish himself in Hollywood, 
It would only be natural for him to want to be seen in a big shiny car like that. Rick was self-doubting and insecure, so overcompensating with a Cadillac is just another layer to his persona. And unfortunately, I'm missing that side view mirror, but that's just another challenge that I will eventually overcome, I'm sure. And Quentin Tarantino owns a movie theater in Los Angeles called the New Beverly Cinema. And he likes to create merchandise to support and celebrate the films that he features there. And so this 1969 Topps like inspired custom card of Rick and Cliff was one of the limited merchandise items available but a year ago during the Rick Dalton Film Festival honoring the death of a fictional character. I was sent a thick uh, version and a thin version of this very cool card and this was an eBay purchase. And I'm going to use record shops as often as I can, and I picked up a couple of cool soundtrack vinyl records uh, that are also referenced in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Here is Ron Ely's Tarzan, which is mentioned in the movie. And while it's not the Wrecking Crew, this is The Silencers, uh, a Dean Martin movie where he's the character Matt Helm which also had um, a big part in the movie. So thank you so much for tuning in today to Old Tony Joy and allowing me to share my Once Upon a Time in Hollywood action figures. If you like the video, please like the video. We will keep them coming. In the meantime, I encourage you to check out all the other videos I've done over the last couple of years. And subscribe to Old Tony Joy so that you'll be alerted of the new ones. I feature such things as Masters of the Universe, Transformers, G.I. Joe, Redline Hot Wheels, 80s Hot Wheels, Buck Rogers, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Thundercats, LJ and Wrestling Figures, Hockey Cards, Baseball Cards, Comics, Stickers, pogs, and much, much more. Until next time, this is your Toy Whisperer saying farewell from Old Toy, New Joy. <laughs>